The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 687 Dock Level Zero Starlight stared out from the railing as the ship began to turn, circling the Grand Temple and bringing the city into fuller view. It was built into an intersection between three mountain folds, the city proper and the bulk of its construction laid at the crossroads, even though that wasn't the highest peak. To one direction, directly across from them, the mountain range rose, and it was upon the side and top of this crest that the temple itself was hewn. Pillars and columns rose from crags, alternately supporting platforms where the mountainside was too steep to build or remaining as natural rock, plazas and interiors cut away around them. The architecture seemed to widen as it rose, an illusion caused by being lit from below, ethereal blue light bathing the stone roads and casting shadows of the pillars on the ceilings above. Most of the light came from luminescent foliage that I saw, carefully cultivated gardens and hedges dominating the city, especially the lower districts. But there were also veins, carved midnight blue in geometrical patterns and glowing through the rock, pulsing even from a distance with an unearthly brilliance that made her shudder as if she could see it with more than her eyes. That magic did more than illuminate, she knew beyond any doubt. It reminds me of my stop in Wilderwind, Amber remarked, leaning with her hooves folded on the railing. Maple perked her ears, standing between the two. Oh? How so? Designed for flyers. Amber pointed a hoof at several points in the city, graduating from residential to the temple proper. There are walkways, but they're narrow. Look how vertical it is, and how many entrances are open to the air. Starlight had taken those for balconies or windows, but now that she looked again, the distant forms of ponies could sometimes be seen taking off or landing. The skies weren't full, but they were hardly empty, and she wondered just how many ponies the city held. A thousand? Ten? It was far smaller in diameter than Iron Ridge's massive crater, but there was more dense and engineered like the stone district all the way through. Captain! Jaxie called, leaning toward the bridge. Bring us about over that ways. Lower down on the temple proper, if you please. They finished skirting the center, flying close enough at times that Stolly could make out the eyes of individual ponies watching them. No one hadn't stopped what they were doing to look up, from gaping stallions to concerned elders to bat ponies in fancy robes. Anyone not a Cerosian was too few and far between for her to tell if there were any at all, and a filly on a rooftop frantically waved. Starlight waved back, slower and slightly awestruck by the civilization below. This wasn't the first time she had been in a city, but Iron Ridge and Storhoof had both been sailed into, and Isvaldi was barely a provincial town next to the Grand Temple. Seeing from above, a city that was built for flyers, designed to be seen from the air, stirred something in her heart, and she briefly wondered what it would be like to fly too. Jaxi strolled onto the bridge, and their course corrected again, his and Gerardo's voices emanating from within. Soon, their target became apparent. A dock protruded and sat a dip in the larger mountainside, a short distance above the moonlit cloud layer. A single airship was moored to its side, hanging from a dirigible, but elaborate and fancy in design. The sigil on its side, Starlight was sure she recognized, but couldn't place from where. With a shimmer of harmonic energy, the immortal dream drew up along the opposite edge, room enough for two more airships left further down the dock. A contingent of Cerosians already awaited them, armed and armored, yet looking at ease. Yesna jumped from the side, soaring to them and barking something Starlight didn't understand. Every one of the ponies stood suddenly at attention, though their curious eyes stayed fixed on the energy comet as they split into two lines. Two hovered out, searching the ship until they found a gangplank and extending it to shore. Thank you, Schoenswark nodded, then looked around at everyone assembled. All right, ponies, unless Jaxi says otherwise, we need an away team. More importantly, we need others who will remain here with the ship. Valet, Felicity, Starlight, and one of me or Gerardo should go. Prioritize diplomatic relations and finding us a doctor who can look at harsh water. 
Don't worry about our captive until you've determined there's someone ready to take him. Stoic blinked. Why me? The Sarosians on the dock didn't pretend to understand, still standing sharply at attention. Gerardo paced up beside her with a nod, clearing his throat. Might I recommend Igo and Miss Maple as well? That way, we'll have everyone since Harshwater who is in that cave. Good thinking. Shinespark bumped his shoulder with a hoof, walking back toward the bridge. Any other objections? Jamjar smugly grinned, leaning against the railing. I don't need to object when there's nothing you can do to stop me. Amber sighed and shook her head. Kid, if you get yourself in bigger trouble than you can get yourself out of, I will lock up all your posters for a week. Jamjar's booed. Sounds like you're getting yourselves in order, Jaxie declared, walking past. Follow me. Whoever will want words with you, will find them in a high place. Gerardo's logic was sound enough for Starlight, though she couldn't help but notice the black sword was missing from his side. Had he decided to leave it behind, given how dangerous it was to the ponies they wanted to be their friends? Would Gerardo actually do that? She fought back, realizing she didn't actually remember any precedents either way. Something about the idea still felt strange to her, but they were going to get Yenavan dealt with once and for all. Everything would make sense after this. I'm ready, Stella declared, hopping up onto Maple's back in a single pound. As am I, Gerardo tucked in his wings, taking point on a gangplank. Well, Valet was staring straight up, the sheer cliff face of the mountain fold forming a blue-lined horizon in the distance. Bananas, let go then. Feeling pretty decent about this place. She patted her flank with a wink. Let's see what happens. I'm as game as all of you are, Maple hummed, bringing up the rear. We'll be back soon, she promised everyone else with a wave. The dock led to an angled archway, entering a wide cave room with hewn walls but a smooth floor and ceiling. The team's Sarosian escort regarded them curiously, but kept up decorum, Jaxie ruling them with force of presence and the swaying of his fancy armor coat. After enough distance that the immortal dream began to be blurred against the glare from its comet behind them, the room reached an end, several apertures set into the sidewall. The door to one was open, a circular floor within, easily recognizable as an elevator. It was spacious enough for everyone, and no one needed any bidding to crowd inside. Stolly tucked in her tail on instinct as stone double doors slid shut behind them, and the elevator shaft hummed with runic energy as the floor lifted and began to rise. End of chapter 687